Hello and welcome everybody. I'm here today on the Exponential Potential podcast with my other co-host, who is our expert guest today, Claire Oatway. Hi, Claire. It's so good to see you today. Hello. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are How are you? Uh, I, I'm also. I've been having um, I've been having a whale of a time, as you you may have heard of, of about some brilliant interviews, and I can't wait for mm-hmm. them to be live. But but one of them's just come out with Brad Axelrad, and yeah, there's a lot of goodness. It was really really good interview. Um, although we're having to keep marking our interviews as explicit, so I'm like, oh no, we've done <laughs> sex, we've done drugs. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we don't have to do that on yours for some reason. No, I'm just, just thinking maybe there. there's some energetic force there. Explicit, you know, you kind of you're attracting the explicit type of content. And mine's all clean and pure. <laughs> Dark and light, dark and light. <laughs> uh, so this month we are talking all about self-sabotage and we have had some brilliant guests on. As Claire mentioned, we've had the amazing Brad Axelrad. And yes, that's his real name, Axelrad. That Axelrad, that's such a cool name. Um, and so we're really honoured to have him. That episode has, is about, has just published, yes. Yeah. published yesterday yeah, yeah, yeah. um and then we had the wonderful tony wang at the beginning of the month um so yeah we've had some and he, that was a really good powerful episode so i highly recommend you go back and check out the episodes and then i did a, a pretty juicy episode as well so mm. this today we are highlighting claire and we are talking all about how self sabotage keeps you stuck um, yeah, and I've and we've mentioned this before. Self sabotage is so sneaky. Well, it is, and I think what's what's gorgeous in in the way we've introduced that topic is that we've been interviewing men, and I think there's a lot of our audience that think that it's just women that sabotage themselves or each other, you mm-hmm. know, with imposter syndrome and kind of pleasing other people, and we don't realise that. Yeah, men have these behaviours as, as well. I think we often kind of criticise them for their behaviours. <laughs> but that, say, that's the self <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's true. It's true because you can look at, you know, a man as being a complete and utter what's it. Um, yeah. But it's true. The reason why that that's a self-sabotaging behaviour, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And I think we, we um, at times... Uh, when when we say oh you know struggling with imposter syndrome or I'm, I'm struggling with this um we allow permission for ourselves to have those those saboteur behaviors but with other people it's like well they're just like that or mm. they they don't have that you know only only I've got this and we don't always have that compassion or um understanding that this it's it affects every single person on the planet every different culture in in very different ways and then that affects the people around them yeah 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 yeah. so and so we're talking about it is sneaky and most of the time a lot of the time I don't know whether there's a percentage stuck to this but I'm sure there is but I'm gonna I'm gonna stick out a limb and I'm you might know I'm gonna say about 80 to 90 percent of us don't even know we're doing it yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's yeah. high, isn't it? It's up there. Absolutely. And the most, um, so you've heard me talk about saboteurs in the past, but the most common saboteur is the judge. And everybody has a judge, whether it's a, mm. a judge of themselves in terms of their own performance or how that's gone, you know, my, oh my goodness me, you should hear my little inner critic go, like, oh, you haven't done that right. Oh, you haven't done mm-hmm. that. It's like, oh, quilting at times. Um, judge of other people uh, and, and anybody who's driven in rush hour <laughs> will experience <laughs> that judge. Um, and then the judge of circumstances. And, you know, we've, we've reflected on um, differences between countries and the media, for example. Mm. So, mm. so here in the UK, you know, the press, the media are full of judgment and, you know, tyranny, whether it's 
Wimbledon sports people that we've built up and then they didn't deliver or mm-hmm. if it's the politicians or if it's the, you know it's this time it, we're kind of oh judge 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 yeah, angry frustration it all it all mm. bubbles up um yeah so, so ha- you're, you're definitely right yeah yeah and that's a that's and most of this is a lot of it is human nature as well isn't it but it doesn't mean to say we can't change it so how do you spot, so you just mentioned judgment and judgment is huge. And again, the ripple effects of when we judge on ourselves, on others, we is huge. So how do we spot the saboteur behaviours? How do we become aware of those behaviours? Hmm. Well, you've, you've heard me in the past talk about uh, the work of uh, Professor Shizad Chemin and uh, positive intelligence and mm. I'm a huge advocate of his work and use that in in group work sessions as well and it, he's distilled down um, across many different texts uh, in cognitive psychology or um, neuroscience or success coaching and identified that there are 10 different saboteurs so the judge as I've described is, is that little voice that criticizes you know situations um but also there are other saboteurs uh I've been quite open I'm restless uh which you know always means that you'll always get the latest goss or the latest comment or the latest technology from me but it's quite a, a restless energy that means I don't stay with one one thing at a time um does, hyper- does that does that sorry just to yeah. t- drop drop in there rest so when you're restless does that mean that you find it when somebody's got restless as a saboteur does that mean that you find it very difficult just to rest to relax to stop to stay still yeah and it's been particularly damaging in my own business at times because Mm. um it you can see it as a like a shiny object as well so Mm -hmm. it's like oh okay I really I'm really interested in this and so I will kind of pursue something really quite intensely for three months, four months, five months and, you know, uh, around AI and where that goes or around tech stewardship and and what that means. And, you know, really very deep exploration, but not necessarily look look critically at how I can weave that through into my business, how I can bring benefits to others, what the common links are because then I'll have a new shiny fashion. object <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah mm. yeah yeah um and it can also mean that you struggle with feeling present uh, mm. because your mind's racing to the next the next the next where's that come from looking for a, a bit of a hit uh in in terms of the dopamine of curiosity so Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, for for the restless, that's that's how it can come through, and it drives it drives my husband absolutely nuts. It's um, it's one that's in my family. Uh, um, my maiden name is Cordery, so uh, he calls it the Cordery gene. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it we probably are... is partly gene related. <laughs> it would partly be gene related, but again, just because it's your, your parent, that's another. So, so actually, isn't that another saboteur of behaviour? I don't know whether that comes up in the top 10, but well, my mum was like this or my dad was like this or runs in the family. Yeah, well, um, it's not necessarily saboteur behaviour, but it's one of the reasons why saboteurs are formed. Um, So so saboteurs are kind of deep ingrained behaviours that you develop as a young child Mm -hmm. uh, to keep you safe, to keep Mm -hmm. you loved, to help you Mm -hmm. to grow. Um, and so the restless is around the kind of playfulness that is common throughout my family. So if we go to the beach, um, we won't lie on the beach. We'll take a canoe, we'll take a kite surf, we'll take three picnics, we'll take a surfboard. The dog will be there. Kind of it's just like everything all at once. And um, sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> it's, it's great fun. But for Stefan, who's um, a bit of a stickler, who likes everything quite ordered and in its place and understood it's just chaos and mayhem <laughs> so and, yeah that's how that comes through yeah so it, I mean restlessness is can be really beneficial 
but oh. if it's too far the other way and you're not creating that space yeah okay great I just wanted to sort of emphasize what a restlessness looks like yeah. because it might not just be um rushing around the house and doing 10 things at once or you're at work doing 10 things at once because that can work for people it can but it can but a lot of the as we'll discover that a lot of the saboteur behaviors are strengths that just tip to extreme right and it's at these extreme levels that you start damaging yourself or you Mm -hmm. you don't reach your optimum performance um so i'll explain i'll own another one of my my strongest saboteurs which has been around the hyper achiever Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, uh, you know, I, I came from a corporate background, but uh, you know, did really well academically at school. Uh, went on to uni to do a law degree. Uh, kind of went into a corporate environment and you know, uh, promoted, 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 promoted. So all of the traditional markers of success um, coming through from that, and uh, yeah, lots of gold stars um <laughs> and it's it's hilarious when I put my acronyms my 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 post nominals on my signature um you know at times they they outrank my actual name because I have so many letters after my name <laughs> wow I did not know that about you it's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of letters um but well, again, that's, well that's that's a, and also that high, it's not just high achiever anymore it's hyper achiever um that's why you went that's where you took part in the olympics <laughs> but yeah but um thank you but uh the the core reason for that is i don't have an ability to say to myself well done claire mm. well done that's awesome you're amazing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i i thought that that would come with the next certificate that would that recognition mm. or that mm. kind of the pat on the back comes from external judgment as opposed to me being able to you know, really stand in. God, Claire, she don't have much you've achieved today. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so the hyperachiever was a real factor in terms of my burnout because I didn't, I didn't have any stop mechanism, and I always thought uh, that I wasn't doing enough, I wasn't good enough because particularly in the leadership as you go up people stop praising you or recognizing your work or it becomes quite superficial oh darling you're wonderful mm-hmm. um and and so you don't you don't get that feedback and if you don't have an internal feedback loop that says you, you're doing a great job mm. you'll you'll strive to find it somehow like and it continually be there over hyper achieving until yeah. you get to the point of burnout yeah yeah or yeah. yeah or the universe well that is a massive two by four does isn't it you get hit with something an illness or something quite big will hit you in the face and make you stop yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um mm. I'll, I'll pick on and I'll pick another one which is around hyper analytical and it's not one that I'm very strong on um, but it has is one that I've worked through with a client of mine. Um, so hyper analytical might be somebody who works in finance or IT or engineering. They're really, really good at logic, really good at logic. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if you need a problem solving, you'll go to them and they'll figure out a way. Even the most complex and impossible puzzles they'll be able to, to solve. But I actually emotions can be really messy for them mm-hmm. so they don't quite understand why people around them get so emotional so taken to an extreme um you know we we're of an era where we grew up with star trek so you have um spock as a character who was the vulcan you know very scientific or you know some of the ai or robot um archetypes that come through they are really really bright individuals who um, are able to be calm in a crisis, uh, to break stuff down, but don't necessarily form as deep a connection with other people or accidentally frustrate other people because their strength is in the analytical. Mm. So they're always like, well, what's this about? <laughs> um, and, and can you over analyze as well? Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, yes. Or you can be frustrated in the logic. <laughs> Um, and that also really shines through in that and what springs to mind is um, relationships or over analyzing what you just said to somebody or how that presentation went or over analyzing how somebody just behaved a boyfriend or a partner or a friend and you just constantly you know can you wake up in, in the middle of the night with it as well can't you just yeah. this same story going over and over and analyzing it and dissecting it and to, so, yeah, to the point where you're actually not sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So there's a, there's a number of different archetypes that are in play. As I said, they, they develop when you're, they develop when you're small. So the hyperachiever would have been, you know, would have been at school. That would have been picked up mm-hmm. by my parents. And like, oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. It, it would have developed and grown from there for me. Um, and as you grow and develop, so those strengths become more and more ingrained. They become almost automatic behaviours. Uh, so you'll you'll find people are very quick. So when I describe the hyperanalytical, the people in finance throw a bunch of problems at them. <laughs> They'll mm-hmm. be able to cut through very very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know it it can certainly be a strength. And and part of the reason for that automatic behavior is that in terms of your brain wiring you have that in, that external impulse and then it goes through your um synapses and, and you can and it will automatically jump to this behavior this response uh this answer um whether it's an emotional or a verbal or you know whichever it is that action kind of it's it's not thought through so it's it it is it becomes automatic over time Mm. um but it can cause damage because you live inside your head way more than you realize but Mm -hmm. not everyone has the same head as you not everyone has the same experience as you not everyone has the same combination of saboteurs as you so you you kind of start to become quite disconnected from people and then judge their behaviors because they're not like you even though mm-hmm. you're trying not to they just mm-hmm. you don't completely understand them <laughs> yes uh, and that is another phrase isn't it that keeps us stuck I don't understand you I don't understand why they behave that way or I don't understand why you know I don't understand and we can drive ourselves crazy with that statement and it's well. Does it really matter that you understand or not? Sometimes it doesn't. Do, do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. Some. It doesn't matter that you don't understand. I've said that to my my dad. Well, I don't understand why this that. And I'm like, Dad, you don't need to understand. In that, in you know, in that instance, there are obviously places and times where you do need to understand because there's a two way conversation and both parties need to understand what's going on. Yeah. What, yeah. So what? What well, can, can you give me a couple of other saboteur behaviors as well? So judgment, high, hyper hyper achiever, analytical. Yeah, um, hyper vigilant, and this is uh, uh, somebody that can that will come across as anxiety, but they're really good at spotting risks as they come through or what might go wrong. Um, so a bit of a worrier, I guess. Uh, and if we were looking at if we were looking at team dynamics, you'd really want someone like that on your on your team because they'd help you to identify where problems might come about and to mitigate them. Um, but again, it, it's it's a behaviour that's really good at, at identifying danger, mm-hmm. but it can stop you from doing something that may not be dangerous or could actually bring you a lot of joy and a lot of success but you're you're kind of really hyper vigilant hyper aware of what might go wrong um i've mentioned the stickler so the stickler will come through as as me being moaned at by my husband because the coffee jars off to one side <laughs> and being accused of that being a deliberate behavior it's like uh no <laughs> <laughs> oh, so so the stickler sees that there's an issue that something isn't in the place that it needs to be in and then thinks that you've done it deliberately yeah yeah because, to wind them up 
because <laughs> they really like order um and we we might see that as perfectionism as in another frame frame it's just like everything in its place everything right um everything controlled um because and again it's the it's quite an it's quite an anxious response to to be able to make your environment feel safe for you because mm, mm. you know you know what's going on there um so the stickler is 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 a is akin to perfectionism we then have the pleaser you know which is i really want you to be happy i want you to be loved and, and another client who who was a man actually as well um worked within hospitality and so you know very charming he really understood um how people tick and would you know we've worked very hard at helping people feel they're having the time of their lives in the mm -hmm. in the restaurant that he was running you know it was just that that pleaser aspect was definitely a strength but it also meant that in social environments he'd end up um really damaging himself because kind of the people he was hanging out with would go to extreme behaviors and he'd be like yeah okay right <laughs> um some of that was because he felt that he would need to say yes to fit in or you know mm -hmm. kind of to to maintain that connection um so it's always great to have a pleaser in your life it's not great to be a pleaser <laughs> yeah <so>. and it, yeah <laughs> And it, yeah, it's nice to it's nice to be appreciated for doing something that has made somebody else happy. Although, um, but yeah, when you do it too much, you then deplete yeah. your own cup, don't you? You you're do. Focusing, and also, you're yeah. focusing on filling other people's cup rather than filling your your own. And then that can start to tip. For example, when um, you don't get the feedback. And you don't get positive feedback, and then you can start to resent people around mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. um, particularly in family dynamics and couple dynamics. Um, you know that that can come through as the extreme or the the downside of, of that positive. Um, you might then also have controller, and so that's mm -hmm. that's the third of my triangle, which is the <laughs> restless hyperachiever controller. Now, a, a controller is a is a natural born leader. Um, so they will I, I can't abide a vacuum in a room it's like right come on let's do that and again it's 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 very good at getting things done and a controller mm -hmm. in a corporate environment or in a team environment you know you have that that leader trait who's ready to move people forward who's ready to make sure everyone's um, in check uh, but sometimes it can be exhausting in its own way. And the other damage that it can cause in terms of relationships around you is that you, because it's such a natural behavior for you, you do it, you overdo it, and then you don't leave enough space for people around you to show their leadership patterns, to, for them to step up, to provide support or to nurture and to grow because you just, you don't consciously go, no, I'm going to stop you from growing by controlling it all. Mm -hmm. It's just an automatic, oh, let's get this done. All right, here you go. Let's get this done. And again, yeah, it's a really common one um, among senior professionals um, mm. because, it, because it, it's part of who they are. It's been part of the success and how they've grown. We don't always see how strong... It can be like a very, very old cheese. <laughs> very strong. <laughs> you don't realise how smelly it is. Yeah, it can be quite stinky to some people. <laughs> That's the way you love it because it's just what you've grown with. Um, yeah. <laughs> and and the, the, the phrase that springs to mind of a, of a really extreme controller is my, it's my way or the highway. Yeah. Um, and, and something that I've heard a lot um, well, if I don't do it, it won't get done right. Yeah, can't trust people you to know, do it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, not it is. It's trust, isn't it? Not trusting others. Yeah, a yeah. lot, a, a big part of that is not is lack of trust. Yeah, and it, and again, it comes from this desire to create safety, and certainty, and get that in place. Um, so 
but like at a very very young level mm. so it's it stems from that point of us growing up yeah and ultimately yeah. wanting to keep safe yeah a com- yeah a, a, that nature that nature nurture there will be some natural um kind of genetic elements or brain development elements that, and then you have this you know the environment that you grow up with as a as a child and then the interactions that you make as as a child the community that you grow up in the community that your parents grew up in mm-hmm. you know, all of these different factors will will have a strong part to play but yeah yeah and you can imagine um you know with these I, de- I describe it as you know the inner voice and the inner voice can either you know push you push you push you push you to do something and you don't know why you're doing it. you're being pushed compelled to do something or the your inner voice can be a loving and nurturing inner voice like a parent would be to you or an ideal parent would be um and this and very often the saboteurs um are a bit of a driving voice or a mm. negative voice that that come through um so yeah yeah so we I mean like that's why we all have them because we've all had very few of us have had an ideal if you or perfect childhood although it is ideal and it is perfect because it puts us in the place we need to be to be able to learn evolve and grow well and when I've been using the saboteurs with with many clients because there there are a number of different resources online you can find out your saboteur schools um and I always encourage people to and they go well isn't that just my strengths like yeah and they're awesome they are awesome and yeah it's actually they're holding you back from your optimum Mm -hmm. so you want to be in charge of your saboteur kind of um collaborating with your saboteur rather and consciously doing that rather than being pushed into automatic behaviors by your saboteur I mean the controller let me explain that a little bit better my controller for example I'm I'm working on a contract at the moment and there's another very strong controller in the room except I report to that controller (laughs) and so so we it's it's a kind of it's a bit of a brilliant fit as we get on but at the same time it's like oh no 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 I'm gonna do I'm gonna do that so it it creates a, a tension um that's that's there uh when you when you have two very similar saboteur types or when you have um saboteur types that you know for example the pleaser and then the hyper analytical. So the pleaser will be like, all oh, this emotion, all this. I want to be mm-hmm. happy. And the hyper analytical is like, yeah, but show me the logic. You know, mm-hmm. I, I can't see the logic. Um, when you've got those batting against each other, that's 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 an issue. Um, but in in both situations, being able to to spot that the voice may not be the most loving and nurturing voice, or you know, is there is a common pattern. And then choosing whether or not you want to follow it. That's a different matter. So those those behaviours can be, they can be sabotaging or they can be a strength. Yeah. So can't, yeah. And it's where, how far you push it. Yeah. And recognising when it becomes a sabotaging behaviour and recognising when it becomes a strength. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And, so, um, oh, sorry, Tom. Yeah, go on, you finish. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so I encourage everybody to, to do the quiz and then to start to see like the common phrases or terms that come through. So you'll, you'll start to understand it and then just be, just observe when it comes through in your life. And um, sometimes for your saboteur, you can give it a ridiculous name or make it a cartoon figure and go, oh, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> it's that little controller okay ah right and again it it stops you being so tightly connected to that behavior which means you can choose whether it's a strength or whether it's a success. 
So are there any other, I mean, I think we've, we've talked about the damages, the damage that sabotage can cause. Um, are there any others that you want to add to that? Um, any other damage that when you are going over to the to the saboteur, any other damage that that can cause that's not yeah. so obvious? Well, within relationships, and so very often when you've got two people in a room, you may have four different people in the room or five different people in the room. So what can often happen is that you can respond to other people's saboteurs unconsciously. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's like a knee-jerk so, reaction yeah yeah and it's it's quite common to do in conflict and and so I've I've run this I've run the saboteur assessment across a group and it's it's always fascinating because people go away and do the quiz and then they they show it to their spouses and their spouses are like yes that's completely you this is... <laughs> and they they see that because it's it's that little friction point. It's like that's what I love about you, but it drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. um, so relationships can can be a a, a really sticky issue, um, and also uh, kind of around. We've talked about the impact on your health, um, but also your your happiness and your mm. your presence because your happiness, you know, with with many of these, you're externalizing happiness rather than realizing that you can find it within yourself mm -hmm. um, and you can find it in this moment uh so so the the main premise has been very much around you know you can achieve a lot of success you can achieve a lot of happiness how many people are truly achieving optimal success and happiness mm -hmm at the same time it's just mm. okay, let's start cracking through this mm. Mm. and are there any other things so you just mentioned about uh treating your saboteur as like a cartoon character or something funny are there any other ways that you can tame the saboteur when you recognize it because it's a lot of that is self-awareness isn't it there's a there's a really big bit that's self awareness, um, but there are actually three aspects that that come through really strongly in positive intelligence. One is around weakening the saboteur. Um, and you don't you don't your saboteur is there to keep you safe and loved, and so it's always a part of you. And it's it's very strongly connected. Um, but when I say weaken, it's more like more externalizing and going this is not me this is not who I truly am I'm not this saboteur I'm a combination of all these different parts the other side is um around some of the micro mindfulness moments um mm -hmm. and some of the sensory hacks so we've we've done those before where you can you know gently rub your fingers against each other and often when you bring your body in play you disrupt those automatic thought patterns so if you're in a situation where your saboteur is coming out very strongly you can do one of those sensory hacks whether it be a, a visual one looking at something really in detail or if it's an auditory one or a, or a touch one and go back to the task and you almost choose how you're going to respond rather than have the automatic response so the mindfulness um, helps you to yeah helps you to be happy helps you to be healthy, but it also helps to um, to disrupt automatic patterns. Mm -hmm. it gives you the power of agency, the power of choice. Mm -hmm. And then the third area is is really around developing uh, what Shizar calls sage behaviors around compassion and curiosity and and action. Um, which are more uh, right brain activities and can really help you to step outside your ego. Um, so compassion is a really strong activity that you can do for yourself and for other people mm -hmm. that will, will help you to see the person, not necessarily the saboteur, and you know, show love to that person. Um, so a very practical one there is is around the use of childhood pictures. Um, so for, for me with that hyperachiever, 
uh, kind of one of the strongest, one of the strongest sessions I've been doing myself is, is looking at a childhood photo of me mm. and just seeing love for that child. For, mm. you know, and that love does not stem from the, the degree or the masters or the job number. That that love stems from that curious, playful, loving, gentle child that's there. Um, and you can do that with other people as well. And you know, when you when you start to see people as children, not infantilizing them, but seeing them as children, you see them as their their purest form. Mm. And you bring compassion and um, an understanding to that. Mm. Yeah, that helped help me to live with Donald Trump in the world because it's it's like a you know he acts out in that way like a a bully at times, and that might alienate a few people. Um, but he he sometimes demonstrates bullying behavior it's like well what's he trying to control what's what's underneath mm. why why mm. does he do that it, and, and where does that stem from he's always trying to show and demonstrate how good he is what's what's missing mm. Him. Mm. Um, yeah yeah I think that's a really valid point because when somebody is behaving in a coming from a place of bullying and control or whatever it might be there's there's always something that's underlying that's it's come from somewhere and none of us have perfect had perfect childhoods mm -hmm. and we don't know what's going on in that other person's shoes so when you can take a step back and have mm -hmm. that compassion and go well maybe he had a and it's not an excuse though but maybe he had a really awful childhood or maybe you know there's something going on there and actually it's the people that act out the most that need the most compassion well and the yeah the people that criticize the most as well can you mm. imagine how they treat themselves mm. can you imagine the self-loathing and self-doubt that they have for themselves mm. um, because the the way that they feel safe is to put others down yes yeah. yes and it doesn't make their behavior right or okay nope. No. Um, but it shifts and changes the energy of it for sure. Yeah. 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 And I mean, just on on that particular point as well, there's a really good um there's a there's a good trick you can play if you're in conflict, and you can just test this out wherever. Um, find two polar opposite views. Uh, it might even be on football teams. <laughs> let's let's pretend we're really into football teams. <laughs> Man United and uh, Liverpool. Uh, well, or Man City. Yeah. Or Man City. You know, yeah, Man yeah. City. Man City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll be United. You can be City. Oh, thank you, Tyler. <laughs> um, I used to support. I used to be a football supporter years ago. So Man United was my team. Sorry, everybody, but they were. <laughs> Man City is my boys' team. Ergo, it's my team. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. So we can have really opposite views about how rubbish Man United <laughs> <laughs> yeah for example I was like Man City are the absolute best and it, there's polar opposites um mm. no Man United are the best okay it's I don't the, know whether they I don't know actually whether they are because I haven't followed football for years this but might be the end of a beautiful friendship <laughs> um but then it starts to look at a 10 percent and go well, actually let's why don't I just accept that you're not completely wrong Maybe you're ten percent right and ninety percent wrong, <laughs> and then look for the ten percent. It's like, well, why would you believe that? And it's like, let, let's be curious about what what ten percent you know, you're right about, and and see how that goes. And it's like, yeah, well, had a couple of strikers, and you're in the Premier League. Yeah, all right. Yeah, you've uh, you've won a few cups. Yeah, <laughs> and then they go, and then it just starts to build. It's like, okay. Well, Okay, so I give you another 10%, and I give you another 10%. You don't have to be in the same place. You don't have to get to full agreement. But you do, in that kind of exercise, you create space for the other person's views, and you create a kind of curiosity about, well, what, why might they be right? And what am I missing? What am I missing? Mm. And um, one of the things I notice a lot on social media is it, with a lot of social movements, you're either in the camp or you're against the camp. And we stop listening. 
Yes. And actually, that's really um, something, instead of being against something, be for something. Yeah. So, you know, rather than be, um, so for example, let's use Black Lives Matter movement. That was for Black lives. It wasn't against um, white police force or it wasn't against anything. It was for black lives yeah um and so and the energy of that is completely different yeah um, and and what I wanted to say as well about just one other thing about being right you know the you this need to be right all the time that also boils down to proof validate proving yourself validation self-worth but a question really a helpful question to add to that I think is um the conversation is do you want to be right or do you want to be happy how important is you being right versus how important is your happiness? And it is that choice point, isn't it? For sure, for sure. Brilliant. So um, I, what else do you want to add, Claire? Because I believe that you have a program around saboteur and how to stop, how to unstick yourself from the self-sabotaging behaviours, as it were. Can you tell us about that? That So there's a... There's a six week program that's supported through an app as well. So you, you go through self-assessment to identify your, your saboteurs, but actually you learn more about your own brain development and you learn more about how saboteurs show up um, for yourself and for other people around you. And also kind of you, you start to explore where it might limit your opportunities, where it might kind of challenge your performance or your, your stress levels or um, your relationships. Um, and then it starts to bring through a lot of these sage behaviors and to to try them on to start to develop them as a growth so that's a that's a six week program that's that's fairly intense as and you know works well as a group because you get a chance to reflect with other people about their their learning um and that's that's a really good one but I also do uh this with corporate teams we start mm-hmm. to explore them and I, I think that there's a real there's a vulnerability that comes when you look this deep at someone's behaviors and we're, you know we've been talking about childhood and so on but actually i think it's i think it's deeper than some of the traditional tools like the myers briggs tools because when you talk about saboteurs this is what shows up at the extremes of workload or or stress or you know success kind of at, at those extreme levels of performance good and bad is where those saboteurs will naturally come through. Mm-hmm. So if you're willing to play there, you can kind of unlock the next level and you know, either calm things down or <laughs> so what would be the benefit of some what would be the benefit of somebody? What would be their outcome if they if they either if they took the six week program, for example, what would they gain from that? Uh so it is a big game changer in terms of your own um stress levels and your resilience in Mm -hmm. moving forward uh it has a huge impact on your personal performance at at work as well because it it brings through aspects of action and um you know starting to minimize some of the perfectionism bits so it's it's very well contained there um relationships as well are kind of one of the one of the core areas that this shifts um and that's the relationship with you and the relationship that you have with other people whether that be you know in a family setting or or at work so all of this unlocks your next level Um, right yeah so it helps take away some of the drama the anger frustration helps you feel more well take certainly takes away stress helps you become more effective uh, and it ha- so it helps your success levels and helps your happiness levels. Yes. Ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Wonderful. Yeah. And we'll put those links in the chat. So we'll put the yeah. link to the six week program in the chat. The link to the six week program. And also, importantly, the link to the quiz. As yes. Said, I wish I'd done this beforehand to find out yours. So I'd love for you to, to put down who yourself, which, which yes, going to do that. I get, yes, I will click on that link and I will do that. 
Yeah. I went, yeah, because I actually haven't done an exercise like that for ages. Yes, yeah, a really good one. Um, yes. Yeah, that's yeah. exciting, actually. I love doing a quiz. Who doesn't love a quiz? Yeah. And so <laughs> open it up to say, you know, if, if you do the quiz, just, just reach out. I'd be really happy um, to have a conversation with someone around, you know, what have they found and what does it mean? What are the next steps? Mm. Um, just half an hour because, um, yeah, I'm a huge advocate of this work. I think it helps you to bridge um, psychology and spirituality and success. So it's, it's, it's a really, for me, it's a great framework to work with. Mm. Sounds awesome, Claire. And I highly recommend anybody to reach out to Claire. Um, she is truly amazing. Um, I'm not prepared anything to say how, why she's so amazing, but she just, she really knows her stuff and she's incredibly passionate about creating happier, healthier, more successful environments, especially in the workplace um, and all around, because that affects your home life and it affects your work life. Are you sure it's not because of my BA law on ZMBA, Finstel, um, <laughs> your essay? I didn't, even, <laughs> I didn't even know you had a law degree. That's crazy. That's crazy. All right. That's because you met me after the course. <laughs> All right, listeners. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you gained um I know you gain stuff from this we would love to hear what you've gained so please comment like share subscribe um yeah share share with people that you think would benefit from this that would be great it helps us to continue bringing you great content um so until next time we'll Mm -hmm. see you soon bye bye Bye, Claire